Out of the three financial statements, I'm going to be showing you how to analyze the income statement to determine if a stock is good for long-term investing. The income statement tells you how efficient a business is at making money. And for a business to make money, it has to produce sales and keep costs down. On the statement, you'll see that through the revenue and expenses the business generated over the years. And keep in mind, the overall goal is to find a business with a durable competitive advantage. I will first go over how to read the income statement and then what to look for. And at the very end, I'll give you a four-step guide on how to find stocks for long-term investing. This is Morningstar.com and let's analyze Costco. And to get there, we go to quotes, key ratios, full key ratio data, and then click on financials and income statement. It's already selected. The first line on the income statement is revenue. And revenue is how much sales the business made not including any cost whatsoever. And this includes both selling products or selling services. For example, if you sold 10 laptops for $1,000 each, then your revenue is $10,000. The next line is cost of revenue, and cost of revenue is a direct expense. So the more quantity you sell, the higher the cost of revenue would be. And sometimes instead of cost of revenue, you will see cost of goods sold. The difference between the two is that cost of goods sold will be either the cost to manufacture or purchase a product into inventory. For example, if you purchase the 10 laptops from Alibaba for $300 each, then your cost of goods sold is $3,000. Cost of revenue includes everything in cost of goods sold, but also includes all the costs involved in delivering the product to the customer. Now we're not in accounting. So just know that on the second line of the income statement, you might see either one. And theoretically, the more revenue produced, the higher the second line would be because it's a direct cost. By the way, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button and the bell so you'll be notified every time I post a new video about investing. When we subtract cost of revenue from revenue, we get gross profit. And just a heads up, there will be three income slash profit on the income statement and gross profit is the first one. Gross profit divided by revenue is gonna give us a gross profit margin. This measures the ability of a business to maintain or increase sales as well as a business production efficiency. In business, staying competitive is very important. If a company doesn't have a durable competitive advantage, then customers like you and me will buy products and services based on whichever company will give us the best price. And you'll see that in a decrease in gross profit margin. In addition, if product costs increase faster than a company can increase the price it charges customers for the product or service, then you'll also see a decrease in gross profit margin. So when you look at gross profit margin, you want to see that it's consistent or increasing for a period of at least five years. And you don't have to calculate gross profit margin by yourself. In the last section where I give you a summary of what to look for in an income statement, I'll also show you where to find these ratios. Everything here after the first three lines on the income statement is going to be indirect cost. So there is no correlation between these costs and how much revenue is made. Operating expense is a cost associated with keeping the business running in its day-to-day -day operations. And on Costco, this is broken down into sales, general and administration, and other operating expenses. There are other companies who also have research costs as part of their operating expenses. So things like salaries, legal, administrative costs, advertising, etc. will all be found in operating expenses. When you take gross profit minus the operating expenses, then you get the operating income. Now you want to avoid companies with too high of an operating expense because if sales fall and you can't cut operating expenses fast enough, then it will be eating into your profit. So high operating expenses can destroy the long-term profitability of a business and you want operating income to be increasing year after year. An operating margin is operating income or loss divided by revenue, and you want to see this consistent or increasing year after year. This measures how much of the revenue a company keeps after taking away direct expenses and business operation expenses. After that, you want to take non-operating costs into consideration, like interest expense and other income or expenses. 
Ideally, you want the interest expense to be low and the other income or expense isn't as important because these are one-time occurrences that isn't related to the core operation of the business. And these things can be, for example, lawsuits, asset acquisitions, and etc. You evaluate the net income with a net profit margin, which is net income divided by revenue. This measures how much of the revenue a company keeps after all expenses and you want to see this consistent or increasing year after year. When you subtract these non-operating expenses from operating income, then you get the income before tax. Then you take the income tax away from that, and then you get the net income from operation. And you want to see the net income increase year after year. And in Costco's situation, there are some other expenses they took away from that to get that net income. And when you take the net income divided by the number of shares available, then you get the earnings per share, which you can find right here, earnings per share. And that's broken into basic and diluted. And ideally, we want to focus on the diluted earnings per share. We want to see that the diluted earnings per share is increasing year after year. The difference between basic earning per share and diluted earning per share is that basic earning per share only takes into consideration the common shares available, while diluted earnings per share takes into consideration all convertible securities that can be changed into common stocks. Now let me give you a quick recap on what you want to look for in an income statement over a minimum of five years. And you can find that period right here and this is available in the free version. We want to see increasing revenue, so we do see that in Costco. We want to see increasing gross profit, so yes, we do see that in Costco as well. Ideally, we want to see relatively low operating expenses, and we want to see operating income increasing year after year as well. So yes, we do see that in Costco. And ideally, we want to see low interest expense, and we want to see over five years an increase in net income. So yes, we do see that in Costco as well. And for the earnings per share, we wanna look at the diluted earnings per share, and we want to see that increasing year after year as well, and we do see that here. And in these numbers, it doesn't have to be every single year is increasing, it just has to be on a general uptrend. For example, if in 2017, these numbers are a bit lower than 2016, then it's okay. Because in general, it's on an uptrend. Now let's go over to the key ratios tab to look at gross margin, operating margin, and net profit margin. We want to see consistent or increasing gross margin percent. And yes, we do see that here. We want to see consistent or increasing operating margin percent. And yes, we do see that here. And we want to see consistent or increasing net margin percent. And yes, we do see that here as well. After evaluating the income statement, you also have to evaluate the balance sheet and cash flow statement. I made a four step guide on how to evaluate and find stocks for long term investing purposes. And you can find that in the link below. And if you like this video, check out the beginner stock investing series that I made.